Today we're going to do something a little different with the lecture. We're going to talk about a number of problems and mistakes that I've seen people making and talk about how to fix them and how to avoid having them. We're going to do this instead of introducing new content this lecture and this will help you prepare for the exam coming up on Tuesday. Regular content will return next week. The first mistake that I see a lot of people making is not reading the problem. An example of this is in lecture six, there was a problem where you had to write a function called reset to red. Unfortunately, lots of people didn't write a function named reset to red. They wrote functions named key tl or other uh, functions like that. Another problem that I saw was people writing something like this. That's not defining a function named reset to red. That's defining reset to red to be the result of running a Big Bang animation, which is not what we wanted. Another instance of not following precisely the directions given in the instructions is people writing the reset to red function so that it didn't always produce red. Here's a function that seems like it might be resetting things to red, but it isn't. This is just calling next TL, and therefore, if you pass it green, it doesn't produce red. The correct implementation of reset to red looks like this. Very simple, always produces red. The next problem I see lots of, not running your program. Dr. Racket is extremely useful for telling you what's going on when you've written a program. If your program doesn't run, for example, because it doesn't have matching parentheses or because your conditional clause uses the wrong syntax, that's a sign that there's a serious problem and you need to fix that rather than continuing on. Don't comment out your program. Don't uh, move on to something else and ignore the problem. Instead, go back and fix the problem. A common cause of this is people making mistakes with the syntax of the language. Beginning student has very simple syntax, but the most important thing about the syntax of a programming language is that all of it matters. You can't make a little mistake or just decide that something is not relevant. You can't put an extra parenthesis somewhere and hope that it doesn't matter. You have to follow the syntax of the program. Here's an example of not following the syntax of the program. Here's one cond clause. We've put an extra pair of parentheses around string equal question mark. It's not okay to just add extra parentheses in places if you're not sure. That won't cause your program to work. I've seen lots of programs written like this. It's really important to remember that where parentheses go matters and it's important to be confident with where you're placing parentheses and other characters in your programs. If you're having trouble with matching your parentheses or you're having trouble with figuring out where parentheses go, watch the new video as part of lecture three that talks about parentheses. Another problem I see a lot of is not solving the lecture problems in your lecture assignments. This seems fairly simple, but what we want to see in your lecture assignment submissions is you solving the exercises in the lecture problems. It's fine to copy down the code developed in the videos, but that's not what we're checking. We're looking for the problems listed as exercises in the lectures. Here, for example, is the end of lecture five. We have exercise two. That's what you need to do. That's where it talks about writing reset to red. That's what you need to solve. Another problem that I see a lot of is missing things that are not defined. Every time you use a word in the program or in a data definition or in a signature, it should be defined somewhere. That means that if you write some, a signature like this, it's really important that the point data definition appears somewhere in your program. Similarly, if you reference a function like nexttl, you have to have defined that function. It's not okay to just assume that something's defined either as a data definition, a function, a variable, or anything else. Fifth problem that I see a lot of is failing to pay attention to signatures. I'll give another example from the reset to red function. Here's a problem I saw sometimes. This function does not produce a traffic light. Instead, it produces an image. Images aren't traffic lights. 
If we recall the data definition for traffic light, it looks like this. All of these are strings, not images. It's really important to follow the signatures and not assume that a circle is the same as a traffic light. Another instance of that problem is the teenager function. Consider this mistaken implementation of the teenager function. It's again not following the data definition because a person isn't a number. Our person data definition looks like this. If you try running the following example, it won't work. You'll get an error saying that you can't use less than or equal to to compare a person. Yet another example of failing to follow the signature looks like this. This program does not return booleans, it returns strings. You can tell it returns strings because they have double quotes around them. Again, you'll get an error if you try to use these booleans in a com conditional. Another problem is thinking that you can combine two values just by writing them next to each other and that that's the same as a structure. That's not how structures work. If we have our structure definition for person, then what you get from using make person is a single thing. It's not two things, a string and a number, it's one person where the string and the number have been packaged up together into a single value. That means that the following signatures are not correct. If we want to write the teenager function, it takes one input, which is a person. Similarly, if we want to take a person and add one to their age, we're going to produce a new person, not a string and a number as two separate results somehow. Another mistake that I've seen in lectures and labs is thinking that structures are somehow magically built in and not something that we have to define. When I write a person's structure, I'm creating it and I'm choosing the names. The names are not built in for us, we have to pick them. Another confusion I've seen a lot is being confused about what happens when you're trying to change something. Let's say we take our person example again. Let's imagine that we have a person who's 18 years old. Now let's say we want to make Carol 19. We can't change Carol. Instead, we're going to, we would create a new person with the same name and the age 19. We can even turn this whole thing into a function. When we're trying to make someone older, we're going to create a new person, and we'll do that with make person, and we're going to add one to their age. We don't try to change the existing person data structure. It's okay to create a new person data structure to represent the same person out there in the world, it's just with a different age. When Carol has her birthday, we're going to add one to her age in our representation we're not going to go change Carol to be a different person with a different age.